Baseball cleared one hurdle, which was obviously the financial aspect, getting the players and owners to agree financially and how much the players will make, what the season length will be. But that's just really, in the grand scheme of things, a very small hurdle. Obviously, that was at the forefront of our mind because that was the biggest impediment to the season so far. But now that that's behind us, really, it's not smooth sailing from here. And then there's a lot of questions um, about baseball. First of all, just getting off the ground. As we saw just this past week, um, the Philadelphia Phillies had uh, a bunch of players and staff uh, get affected with the, with the virus and had to shut down all spring training facilities in Florida and Arizona. And now MLB will start to implement um, spring training very, very soon. So we'll see what hurdles still stand in front of Major League Baseball as they try to return to the sporting landscape. Um, because like I said, the virus is going to, uh, going to provide a ton of questions uh, for baseball today, answer it will not be easy for them to resume. So we'll get RJ's thoughts on the biggest, you know, the biggest question marks um, surrounding the sport and what they're doing health-wise to try to combat and try to keep their players as safe as possible. So a ton, ton to get to, and we will start with baseball. Uh, big baseball fan here myself, if you couldn't tell, and whew, it is nice. I will say this to finally talk about baseball in a non-negative way, in a way that actually is concrete. Because guess what, a season is actually set. And it will be, again, 60 games um, starting on either July 23rd or July 24th. So essentially a month from today, we will have baseball, real actual games to talk about. Uh, and finally, an agreement. After 88 days, when the first agreement in March 26th, when the players and the owners agreed that the players will get their prorated salaries for the amount of games played, 88 days later, we finally have a real concrete plan in place. And again, July 23rd or July 24th will be the season opener. Um, training camp start July or spring training 2.0 will start July 1st, which right around the corner, uh, a little less than a week or so from now. So it is crazy to think that if, after all this frustration, all this consternation, all of this bickering that happened publicly, baseball will be on track to start. And ironically enough, crazy enough to think about when you see that July 23rd start date, they're going to be the first sport back. Despite NHL getting their plan in place, despite the NBA having their bubble set and, and their plan of resumption in place, baseball will be the first sport back somehow, uh, for major sports at least. Obviously, we still have golf and NASCAR going on currently, but for major sports, we'll start again. We'll be the first one back. So here's my question, because as we know, since March, it's been a lot of public bickering. It's been mostly negativity. It's been a lot of owners crying poor, players, you know, not, I don't want to say playing victim, but trying to get their, their due wages and, and showing frustration. And all this public bickering, all this public arguing turned a lot of fans off. So my question is, do you care? Do you care about a 60-game season? Do you care about an MLB season this year and going forward? Because I'll say this, looking back now these last three months, baseball did absolutely nothing to keep you around, to keep you engaged, to want you to be a fan and bring them into their sport. So we, we look back, right? All of this public damage that was done to not only their perception, but to the fans, right? These public negotiations, the NBA had to have negotiations with their players and owners about a season resuming, same thing with the NHL. And soon we're going to see it with the NFL when they try to get going. As we see already, the NFL is having some hurdles that are, that are going to prevent them from maybe having somewhat of a normal year, but we'll see, obviously, the NFL, what will happen if a second wave comes. But anyway, the point is they're going to have to have some conversations between the owners and the players to map out a plan here, try to get a season in some form uh, or another. And all this happened behind closed doors, at least for the NBA and the NHL. Baseball is a complete opposite. Public negotiations, owners leaking plans, players voicing their frustrations on social media. And what this did was create a divide. It divided fans because either you're on one side of with the players like I was, you're on the other side with the owners, like most a lot of other fans were, or you're furious at both sides. You were, you were on the side of just hating baseball overall. And whatever side you're on, it did nothing to help grow your interest in the sport. It did nothing to help bring you in and become a baseball fan. And if you're an average fan, all this public bickering, all this public arguing, all it did was turn you off. Because no fans want to hear this. No fans want to hear millionaires and billionaires in the middle of a pandemic when unemployment is going through the roof, now we have 41, people, 41 million people right now without a job. No one wants to hear millionaires and billionaires fighting over hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars and threatening not to play because of it. So it did a lot of public damage to the perception and more importantly to the fans who want baseball back. It, it, it created a divide and it drove a lot of people away. Not to mention a lot of these negotiations, they were so tone deaf. Like I just said, arguing over money in the middle of a pandemic is an awful look. 
necessary, but just a complete, complete awful look. You have billionaires crying poor that were just fretting over small amounts of money. Again, you have players publicly on social media um, speaking out, lashing out against the owners, voicing their frustration w- with where these negotiations are, are, are coming. Um, and it made just the entire sport itself look foolish, look bad. And motivations both from both the player side and the owner side were questioned at times. Whether they actually want to play, do you have any motivation to care about the fans? Do you actually you know, want to play baseball in 2020? Safety issues aside, I think that's, obviously we can assume that. This is more a financial uh, discussion and discussion argument. So all this negativity out there, the only time we really talked about baseball on the national level, unfortunately, is because of a negative side. And this is, we talked a lot about baseball here these last three months because it was all negative. So they did nothing, nothing to bring in fans, to widen their audience, to especially cater to the younger crowd. Because think about it. We always talk, what, what is it with baseball? We always talk about how they struggle to bring in the younger audience. Rob Manfred has his ideas about speeding up the game, trying to implement new rules to try to bring in that younger crowd, getting games under three hours, trying to limit pitching changes, trying to increase action. Well, guess what? Also, part of of attracting a younger audience is just being there. Right? There's nothing going on right now. For all sports fans, they're desperate for anything. NASCAR's ratings are up. Golf's ratings are up. Baseball had the potential. If they got, you know, everything in line, got all their stuff together, they could have been playing on July 4th. They would have a full month to their own on the sporting landscape where they could have brought in younger fans because there's nothing else to watch. They could have grown their audience and really dominated the landscape and tried to bring their audience back and get to a younger demographic that they struggled with. Obviously, until that didn't happen, and now we will uh, we'll have a 60-game season in late July. So I'm curious because everything I just laid out there was all negative. It gave fans a reason not to watch, and it gave you a reason to hate baseball. So I'm curious, despite all these negatives, are you still interested? Do you care? Because for me, I, my tone and my tune has definitely changed. I'm still very interested. Because as you heard, especially the, as the negotiations just went on, my hope for baseball was that, you know what, if they play near or close to a half a season, it would still feel legitimate. There's no need to be an asterisk. 82 games, even 72 games, sure, it's, it's real enough, right? We've seen seasons that have played half a season, and it's still been fine. The NBA's had a 1999 played 50 games. 2011, when LeBron James won his first title, they played 66 games. So you have seasons and examples where, sure, the, the season was shorter. You play basically half the games, and it's still legit or, you know, counted as legit, and 80 games to me would have been legitimate. So that was my biggest fear and my biggest frustration is as we get now later and later, less and less games, talking about 48 games, 54 games, it's like, okay, if we're going to play baseball, it's really not even going to count. It's really not even going to feel legitimate because you're playing a third of the year. It's not going to be real. And that was my biggest frustration, but I'm not going to lie. As I thought about it more, and then as the news broke that a deal is imminent and now a deal is officially done and we'll have baseball back, at least from a financial perspective, we'll have, we'll at least we'll try to get baseball back. Coronavirus, obviously, notwithstanding. Um, I was into it. I can't lie. I was into it. I was fired up. I was pumped up. And just the thinking about it, even a shortened season is still better than nothing. Even getting to watch with my favorite team is the Mets, 50 games, 60 games, was still better than nothing. So, yes, yeah, so I can't lie. Despite being verbally um, and publicly frustrated for weeks and months on end, right, this, this show was all negativity towards baseball. There was no positivity. There was no, oh, man, this is, you know, they're doing this right. It was all negative. Now, sure, I sat with the players more times than not. I still believe and I still um, back them. I think they were doing the right thing for the most part. But still, it's not like, you know, I'm hoping that the end result was no baseball. So, yeah, so I can't lie. When I heard the news, I was excited. I was pumped up. My frustrations over these last three months about the, about the negotiations, I can't lie, were gone. So now when you look at the actual season of 60 games, it's going to be a sprint. Each game for real is going to be actually extremely important, right? We could talk about, oh, man, a game or a series in August. This is so important. In the grand scheme of things, it's really not. Now, in a 60-game season, where literally every game, basically, because it's almost a third of the year, means, you know, three times more, it's going to be really every game is going to almost have a playoff feel. You get out to a bad 10-game stretch to start the season, your season's almost over. So now it helps to bring intrigue right away because really from the start, from opening day, all of these games count the same and they are very, very important. So I can't lie, a short season, while not ideal, will definitely have an asterisk. 
Don't get me wrong. It definitely will. Whoever wins the World Series will be viewed at, will be viewed differently. I think the sprint of a season could actually be engaging. It could be exciting. And uh, it will definitely be uh, worth the watch. And again, once the, the play actually starts, I feel like my feelings of frustration will go away, and they already have gone away. So I can't, that's why I want to ask you, are you still into it? I'm a diehard baseball fan. I am one of those guys that will be with baseball till, uh, till I die. So really, they can't do anything to drive me away. So of course I'm into it, right? That, that just makes sense. If you are a diehard with anything, right? If you're a diehard into a restaurant, if you're a diehard into a TV show, they could do all these things to try to drive average fans away, or try to get you frustrated. Maybe you are frustrated. Not saying you don't have to be. But in the end, you'll still keep going back. If you hate the restaurant service, if you hate maybe the way the chef is cooking one thing, if you hate the location, but guess what? If you love the one dish or you love the location only or you love just being associated with going to that restaurant, it's going to take a lot for you to not go there anymore, right? It's going to take a lot. So that's how I feel with baseball. But guess what? Not everyone is like that. And more importantly, baseball, if they have a lot of average fans that aren't into it anymore. They are in huge, huge trouble. Because they will have diehards for life. The issue is when the average fan is turned off, when the average fan is frustrated with these negotiations, that in the middle of pandemic, when baseball really is needed more than ever right now, when people are willing to watch anything because they're desperate for sports and you had a month to yourself a, a, on the table and you lost it, are you still into it? Because you, the listener, you guys are, you know, the average baseball fan, if that's, if that's where you fall in this category, I'm really interested to hear your, um, your thoughts about it. Because like I said, there's, there's way more positives than there are, I mean, there's way more negatives, excuse me, than there are positives. Really, baseball gave you no reason to be involved in 2020, Right? So like I said, I kind of fall in that demographic where I'm in no matter what. So sure, uh, all my frustrations dropped and make sense. All my frustrations were gone once you heard a baseball season is actually going to happen and going to be right around the corner. But guess what? Baseball doesn't really need me. They already have me. They need the, the, they need the fans that are there um, that, you know, are sometimes in a baseball. Sure, you know, I'll go on a Friday night. I'll bring my kid and all of a sudden next you know you have a baseball fan um, bred right there.